Cowardly Clyde by Bill Peet Once there was a brave young knight, known as Sir Gallivant, who rode around on a great war horse, shouting, Bring on the fire-breathing dragons! Bring on the man-eating giants! Bring on the ogres and trolls! I'll clobber the brutes, I will. All this shouting was upsetting to Clyde the great war horse. He wasn't the least bit brave, and he worried about what he would do if Sir Gallivant ever got his wish and met some horrible monster in a fight to the finish. Clyde didn't want anyone to know he was a coward, so he pretended to be brave by prancing around with his chest out and his nose in the air. But his uppity act didn't fool the farm dogs. They could spot a coward a mile away and always had great fun barking at the jittery horse just to watch his eyes roll and his ears twitch. Clyde was so skittish that even a cross-eyed, silly old scarecrow gave him the creeps. And when he heard the news that a gigantic ogre was on the rampage far out in the countryside, the faint-hearted horse was horrified. The monster always attacked in the middle of the night, kicking in barn doors and ripping off rooftops to get at the livestock. It was a time of terror for the farmers and their families, and since they had no way to fight the huge beast, they decided to abandon their farms and flee to some faraway place. They scurried down the roads by the hundreds, taking their animals and all the things they could possibly cart or carry along with them. Here, here, no need to panic, shouted the brave Sir Gallivant. Don't lose your heads. I'll throttle the monster in a trice. I'll finish him off before tea time. No, no, not that easy, warned an old farmer. I got a peek at the monster last night. He's a whopper of a thing. A giant owl-eyed, ox-footed ogre, nearly as big as a barn. A night-prowling beast who never shows himself in broad daylight. Never! They say he hides out by day far back in the woods to the north of here. But anyone who dared go in after him would be a dim-witted noodlehead. Then I'm a dim-witted noodlehead, ha ha ha, laughed Sir Gallivant, and I'm off to meet the owl-eyed ogre. Gee, hop, Clyde, boy, let's go. As Clyde galloped on north across the fields and cow pastures, he was hoping they would never find the ogre or even a sign of him. But pretty soon, to the horse's dismay, they came upon a barn with half the roof ripped off, and all around the barn were the huge two-toed tracks of the monster. He must be a whopper, exclaimed Sir Gallivant. With tracks like these, we'll catch up to the beast in no time. Clyde, boy, we're in luck. They followed the ogre's tracks on across a grassy meadow until they disappeared into the dark, gloomy woods. They were about to enter the woods, when Clyde thought of the farmer's grim warning, and a cold shiver ran through him that left his knees so weak and wobbly he staggered to a halt. Ho, ho, come now, scoffed Sir Gallivant. Don't tell me my noble high-stepping steed has turned into a chicken. No horse can stand to be called a chicken, not even such a cowardly one as Clyde, so with an angry snort, he headed on into the gloomy woods. It was ever so quiet in the woods, with no sign of a bird or a squirrel. The only sound was the clumpity clumping of Clyde's big feet. And as they went along through the dark, the brush became so dense 
they lost the monster's tracks, but they could still follow the scattering of bones left from the ogre's feasting. Then pretty soon a huffling, snuffling noise echoed through the trees, like the breathing of some gigantic thing. The time has come, muttered Sir Gallivant, clamping his visor shut and getting a good grip on his sword. And all at once, there in the deep shadows, was the terrible ogre. The great hulking beast was sprawled out on his back, in the oak trees sound asleep and snoring. What a cinch, whispered the knight. The brute is far off in dreamland, out of this world. I could slit his gullet in a twinkling, and he'd never know it. But that wouldn't be sporting, would it, Clyde boy? Not fair at all. Then, to the horse's horror and amazement, Sir Gallivant shouted, On guard! The startled monster reared up with an angry whirf, his fierce owl eyes searching everywhere at once. Whirf! He gleefully squealed when he spied the knight on horseback right under his great horned snout. The greedy ogre was always hungry enough to eat a horse, and also a knight in armor, saddle and all. And he leaped to the attack, just as Sir Gallivant lashed out with his sword. But they both missed when Clyde swerved to one side to escape the terrible claws. Then the panicky horse was off and away, running through the woods at a furious gallop. Whoa, whoa, hold up, shouted Sir Gallivant. Stop! Stop, you chicken-livered, cowardly big lout! But the worst of all insults couldn't stop Clyde now. He was determined to save both of their necks, whether his foolhardy master liked it or not. And he kept going full gallop, dodging past tree limbs, leaping over boulders and logs out of the spooky old woods. Clyde was far out in the meadow before he dared slow down to catch his breath. Then, as he took a look back to make sure they weren't being followed, he suddenly discovered his saddle was empty. Sir Gallivant was gone. He had taken a tumble way back in the woods somewhere. Clyde was more frantic than ever. For all he knew, the poor fellow had already been devoured by the ogre. Yet the horse would never know unless he went back into the woods to find out. And he wasn't half brave enough to do that. If there's even a slim chance, thought Clyde, that I could do something to save him, then I must take the chance. If I'm not half brave enough, then I must pretend to be brave. I'll put on a big act. Then snorting fiercely, just like a high-spirited steed, Clyde went charging headlong back into the gloomy old woods. When Clyde reached the spot where they had first met the monster, he was stopped short by a great roaring burst of laughter. <laughs> the giant beast was in a frolicsome mood, playing the old cat and mouse game and the mouse was Sir Gallivant. Even though he had no chance of winning, the heroic young knight put up a furious fight, swinging away with his sword while the ogre kept jabbing at him with a claw that sent him sprawling. Clyde knew that the game could end in a second with one crunching bite unless a horse got into the game. To get the monster's attention, Clyde suddenly sank his teeth into his scaly blue tail. Rawr! cried the ogre, who was much more surprised than hurt. He had never been bitten before, and he whirled around in a snarling fury. Then, as Clyde turned to run, the ogre forgot about the night, and in great leaps and bounds came chasing after Clyde, just as the horse had expected him to. Once again, Clyde was galloping away through the woods, but this time not nearly so fast. He was getting leg-weary after so much running, and the ogre was surprisingly quick for such a big, clumsy, ox-footed thing. 
He came woofling and gruffling through the trees, gaining with every giant step. Then in one wild grab he caught the horse by the tail. That would have been the finish for poor Clyde if he hadn't reached the edge of the woods. In one last desperate lunge, one tremendous surge of horsepower, he made it out into the meadow and hauled the huge ogre out after him. Suddenly, it was the ogre's turn to be terrified. He had been caught by surprise, out in broad daylight with the sun glaring down at him. An owl-eyed monster who thrives on darkness and gloom can't last ten seconds in the bright sunlight, and he knew it. He let go of the horse and burst into horrible howls and screeches that could be heard all the way to Twickenham. Sir Gallivant came dashing out of the woods just in time to see the monster explode in one big kerpuff. And just like that, he was gone. Clyde, stammered the flabbergasted knight. Did, did, did you see that? The big brute's gone. Vanished. Gone in one big kerpuffle. Amazing. Fantastic. I must spread the great news. Tell everyone. Come on, Clyde. Gee, hop, let's go. As Sir Gallivant sent Clyde racing across the countryside to catch up with the frightened farmers, he suddenly realized they would never believe that such a huge beast could vanish in one big kerpuffle. So he quickly made up a better ending for the ogre. Hear this! Hear this! he shouted. I have clobbered the monster, smashed him to bits and pieces. Just one big banquet for the buzzards. He's gone forever! The wonderful news was greeted with resounding cheers and shouts of joy that echoed for miles around, and Sir Gallivant became an instant hero. After that, when Clyde went prancing along with his chest out and his nose in the air, he really was feeling brave. The farm dogs could sense it at once, and they gave up barking at him. It was no fun barking at a horse who won't twitch an ear or even bat an eye. But after all, a horse who bites a giant ogre on the tail and lives to trot another day is just about as brave as anyone can be.